The Fatui Harbingers are some of the vilest characters in the entire game, with crimes against society ranging from annihilation, corruption, and human experimentation. In the previous episode of this miniseries, we discussed all 11 of the Fatui Harbingers, but today, I want to dive into the intricacies of the Harbingers and the Saritsa's plan against the Divine, and why she wants to declare over what happened to the Conrians. Again, this video is just speculation and is not indicative of any final product of the game. Without further ado, let's begin. Why do the Saritsa and the Harbingers want to rage war against Celestia? Let me summarize my hypothesis and we can break it down during the video. I believe that Asaritsa's plan is to use the Gnosis of the Seven Archons to directly become the doorway to the Garden of the Gods, which subsequently allows her forces to rebel against the heavenly principles of the gods that destroyed Conria. To achieve this, the Saritsa wants to understand and further research into creating enhanced entities capable of fighting the gods without the need of a vision, as well as finding those intelligent and vengeful towards Celestia's limitations to be the harbingers of her cause. With her powers as the Archon and her political rule, she will appoint these harbingers to hone the crafts of Archon residue and find ways of recruiting those that are loyal to the cause of revolution for the sake of making a better world. This very action is motivated by the want of the harbingers to cleanse the world of short-sighted and ignorant gods, as well as the corruption of the Abyss. The Saritsa wants to make the Divine pay for their unfeeling and strict adherence to the heavenly principles of punishing human ambition with destruction and wrath. For in the eyes of Celestia, to question eternity was forbidden, for Earth to challenge sky, blasphemy. So, let's begin with the analysis. The Saritsa's plan to use the Gnosis of the Seven Archons is to directly become a doorway to the Garden of the Gods. Humans scheming to enter the Garden of the Gods isn't actually unheard of in Genshin Impact. In a Tiara of Thunder, there was a time that humanity questioned the rule of the gods because of their ambition and pride. The Saritsa's motivation of letting other humans enter the Garden would be a possibility, considering that humans of the past did not need a god to assist them. The Saritsa would therefore need the power of the Gnosis to create a doorway straight to divinity. The Gnosis is the way that the seven Archons tap directly into Celestia. Therefore, it isn't impossible to say that the Saritsa is finding a way to try and not only sever the other gods' connection with Celestia, but also strengthen her own by directly meddling with the concentrated energy of the Gnosis. I believe that this also transitions into the Fatui Harbingers and why the Saritsa is trying to amass powerful and vengeful entities to fight in her evolution against the Divine. To achieve this, the Saritsa wants to understand and further research into creating enhanced entities capable of fighting the gods without the need of a vision, as well as finding those intelligent and vengeful towards Celestia's limitations to be the harbingers of her cause. The Eleven Fatui Harbingers' level of loyalty to the Saritsa is unknown at the moment, save for Senora, Pantalone, Piero, and Tartaglia. Some may want to follow out of fear, some through obligation, some because the mask-wearing people were so fun to be around, and some maybe through strict and unwavering loyalty. But we cannot deny that eleven harbingers each have some form of anger or obsession with mocking the heavenly principles set by Celestia in one form or another. Piero wishes to mock the absurd callousness of the foundation principles of the world. Pantalone was angered by the gods greedily holding many forms of power and robbing those like him that are destitute. Dottore wishes to exercise his arrogation by creating an enhanced entity even better than what the people deem as gods. Scaramouche is angered by the fact his fate was chosen for him out of his control and he demanded to spend the remainder of his days free from the strings of fate. Signora wishes to purify the sins of the insolent and ignorant gods, and Tartaglia wishes to conquer the land and bring the heavens to the Saritsa's feet because he believes that she will bring true salvation. Each of the known harbingers have a dedicated reason why they are fighting in the Saritsa's revolution, either out of vengeance or out of arrogance. Therefore, such strong anger and ambition is what then allows the Saritsa's grief and wrath 
to manifest in the form of the delusions. Our knowledge on delusions is relatively limited, but we do know that the Tsaritsa is weaponizing the wrath of the gods in order to create the delusions. This we know from the Archon quest where Scaramouche was sent to manufacture delusions. Delusions were not always strictly created out of crystal marrow, since we know that a year ago, delusions were already being manufactured and Deluxe's father had access to one. However, we can conclude that whatever is inside of the delusions feeds on a person's anger and not necessarily just the Tatarigami from the story quest. The Tatarigami is quite similar to the miasmic tumor of the sacred Sakura and the curses of the gods from Liyue that Xiao battles. Therefore, it isn't relatively impossible to say that the Tsaritsa herself is also exhibiting this kind of energy, seething rage towards the divine. The delusions eat away a person's vitality, similar to how obsession eats away at a person slowly but surely. Emotion is a strong catalyst for impulse. In Senora's Mask, it states that even the Fatui Harbingers are supposedly receiving backlash from their delusion, stating that, Perhaps it is fair to say that only those who possess an obsession close to or even exceeding the level of delusion might be willing to join this group that so rebels against the heavenly principles, binding their remaining days to their delusions. But we do know an interesting fact. The delusions aren't meant to only be used by the Harbingers. Not even the raw material is only meant to be used for the Harbingers. If the Tsaritsa's intention is to mass-produce the delusions and subsequently give power to those that are ambitious, then perhaps it's a test to see how strong a human's vitality and resolve really is. The Eleven Harbingers already have means of enhancing themselves beyond human capabilities, as some have transcended mortality like Senora. So the next course of action would be mass production of the delusions to the rest of humanity. With her power as the Archon and her political rule, she will appoint these Harbingers to hone the craft of Archon residue and find ways of recruiting those that are loyal to the cause of revolution for the sake of making a better world. Each of the Fatui Harbingers we know today are actually associated with a project that involves divine power. Piero sent Scaramouche to investigate the false sky. Dottore is experimenting on children to see how effective it is to directly inject others with Archon residue. Scaramouche was overseeing the productions and distribution of the delusions to the masses to promote dependence, Signora was seizing the gnosis, and Tartali was asked to find a way to break divine seals on a god. It should also be emphasized that the plan of the Tsaritsa isn't just limited to stealing the gnosis, which is why the Fatui themselves are mortifying. They are an elite of people with separate missions and extensive knowledge on subjects that most humans don't. It also helps that at least three of their members are hinted to have lived for 500 years, which is why they would be feared for their military strength if one of them is the prototype of a god and the other made herself into living fire. But I also mentioned political rule. Because in Teyvat, we have to understand just how strong political control is over any kind of elemental power. This is what Senora emphasizes before her death that the Traveler is a nobody against her status. It makes sense though, if the Tsaritsa wants to make her endeavors against the Divine untouched and unimpeded by the other nations, then she needs to find a way to force the other nations not to retribute against her. Establishing her nation and her harbingers as a militaristically strong and indebting others to do her will not only lets her have control over important resources and other nations, but also stops any kind of threat that the other nations could pose by rebelling against the Fatui. But I did want to mention this. If the Fatui are so strong amongst the other nations, why are they actively trying to let other nations have some form of access to their technology? After all, the reason why they're feared, according to Venti, is because of the delusion. So giving those to other nations you were supposed to control with fear is actually quite counterproductive. Well, the plan of the Tsaritsa was never to truly rule the world to begin with. Fear was just a simple byproduct of power that became a necessity. As Tartaglia said, she declared war against the whole world because she only dreams of peace.
There was a time where humanity had once lived in peace with the envoys of heaven, but the prosperity of humanity brought pride and ambition, and the mind to question. The envoys of the heaven would promise the humanities prosperity. The gods would goad the people into the promise of their seven treasures. Yet buried in the depths of this world lies smoldering remains, a warning to those that dare trespass. That throne in the sky is not reserved for you. But mortal arrogation never stops. Eternity brings closer to the heavenly principles. The gods do not take kindly when humanity oversteps their boundaries and thinks that they are of any equal to their power. Ambitions are meant to be tempered. A line must be set. Or else you will invoke the wrath of the gods. When considering the heavenly principles, I believe that Beelzebul actually reflects this the best. Her idea of stagnant eternity is what she wished to preserve to bring respect to the heavenly principles. Celestia's ideals for the land may simply just be that. Humanity must know its place as beneath the heavens, and if you dare change the rules of Teyvat, you will be punished. And perhaps that is what destroyed Conria. Conry was the epitome of human pride, a civilization that existed without the gods and created life from the inorganic. Perhaps it is because Celestia doomed the entire nation for the crimes of a handful of people that the Saritza was angered. The whole nation of Conria blamed for the ambition of one person. Perhaps this is the reality that both Piero and the Saritza saw. The pride of humanity was silenced by the gods, and because the rule of the divine is absolute, Celestia saw the judgment they placed upon the land as justice for the world's law. The Sarita's final plan is to show Celestia the strength of human ambition. What they call arrogation is simply just humanity trying to survive. Human progress of some sort. What happens when the gods dare disregard the very creations they made and gave power to? By mass manufacturing delusions, the Saritza would be able to show humanity, especially those that didn't get the favor of the gods, what it truly feels like to be blessed. What it feels like to have power. For just a small price, they get the feeling of controlling the world, trading their life for supreme power. Pretty good deal, don't you think? If they die, then so be it. The weak do not deserve to relish in her evolution after all. Those that are consumed by their delusions to the point their physical body fails them and their vitality is eaten away will perish like a bubble on the water. But those that will live, they will be the ones to stand at the gates of the garden of the gods. The false sky will fall, and the lies of the city in the heavens will be shown for the whole of Teyvat to see. The real question is simply if she stands a chance. Will her own ambition be enough to change the fates of destiny? Or is it all just a fantastic delusion? I completely lied. This series will not be closing with two videos. But the last video of this series will actually be something much more microscopic than the grand scheme of the Fatui and the Saritza, and it'll definitely involve our favorite traveler. But nevertheless, please do check that out. The final, and I mean final, part of the Harbinger series. Will the traveler ever join the Fatui Harbingers? It's definitely an interesting theory, and a thought experiment at that. But we'll see in the future. Nevertheless, if you enjoyed this kind of content, please do consider subscribing. My name is Aster, and thanks for chilling with me. Support me on Patreon and Discord. If the link is broken again, please do comment if the link is broken again. I have absolutely no idea why it's breaking, because it works whenever I try it, so you might want to consider messaging me. But nevertheless, thank you so much for tuning in and thanks for chilling with me. Bye-bye.